Pennsylvania and it's chilly out and cold all kind of weather I'm going to talk about something that's on the internet and I mean there's tons of these on there and you'll see my emblem before I do my videos it says what works for me and on these or anything I show it's what I do and uh, what works for me and if you're deciding to get one of these or you have one or whatever do your research there's tons of videos on these and people tell you different things I've seen some good ones I've seen some bad ones but what I go by and the reason I bought this is what I want to talk about my shop I add just recently added on to it and I have a back room years ago that I added to it so the total square footage is about 580 square feet so we're talking kind of like a two-car garage then these heaters come out of China and they run on diesel and I've seen guys on YouTube putting used oil in them filtering it they smoke and don't work it's made for diesel so why would you I mean you could try it some do they have good reason I don't know if they have good results or what but I would use diesel that's what it's meant for and I've had it for uh, I bought it at the end of December so I've had it for a while I've had it about what a month uh, five weeks and I've been using it and I have in this building clear at the other end of the shop a furnace that come out of our house I refurbished it put it in here put a new one in the house so uh, I can get heat through here I had to put one run from the old shop into the new but I couldn't go up in the upper wall where I wanted to because these are actually separated a little bit the buildings so I had just cut out where the garage door was in the old one put the garage door in this end then I closed it in between those two so I had to make a flexible one I have one opening down here I had like a, a kind of a register you could open and close and uh, I wanted more heat so I took that register out now I could close a lot of those registers down there down some more to get more heat but I didn't want to do that I go in there and work you know it's nice and warm but the thing of it is fuel oil that's what I'm going by if fuel oils pricey now I can't remember what we paid for the last one we have three tanks two in the cellar and one behind the shop for the shop and they're 275 gallons a piece and we'll get them filled uh, usually twice a year but we have a lot left for the next year when we get it filled but what I wanted to try one of these is to heat the garage I put it up to about 72 I let it run maybe four or five cycles that, but I cut it down in the meantime I fire this up now this has six settings and what I do is I put it up full blast to turn it on I put it on number six and I burn it and that keeps it cleaned out they say so then about 15 minutes to, to a half an hour I turn it down on number two when it's not that cold out you know just maybe uh, like in the 40s I'd put it down to two now if it's uh, below freezing or around freezing I'd put it up to three and then I run this I'm getting heat right in here so I don't have to take heat from back there but what it does is it heats this then I notice my furnace later I turn it down to about 65 and it'll come on once in a while but not often so I am saving fuel oil but I have to buy diesel oil for this and the way this runs I haven't you know timed it try it but if I'm going by YouTube a lot of guys say on the lowest setting it'll run like 24 hours on the highest it'll run about 10 hours maybe 11 and I kind of think that's right that's got to be close so I run it as low as I can and I keep that from burning in there to save the oil that's my most concern is if I can save oil this thing's going to pay for it it cost uh, when the guys on YouTube say about what they cost are all over the place I paid hundred and twenty three dollars delivered to the door so hundred and twenty three bucks I take a chance on it now this doesn't run on 110 it runs on 12 volts so you need a battery and you need a kind of a bigger battery like a car battery for it but what I use is my Harley-Davidson battery 
This battery has acid. It's not uh, one of the sealed batteries. Uh, it's smaller than a car, but it's nice sized. But with this being what I have for the 1970 Harley Electroglide, I have to have acid because I need big cranking power for that bike. So that's why it has, and you can still get them. Uh, I always just go on eBay and find them, cheapest one I can, and I get the acid battery. So I, that's perfect for me because I take the battery out of the bike anyway, and you have to, with the acid, you have to loosen the lids on them so it vents when you charge it. Well, I use it in here. I'll use it maybe two days. Then that night, I'll put it on the charger and leave it overnight and uh, into the next day. And it charges up and it's cycling. So it's actually better for it than just setting. It uh, works great. So what I want to talk about too is this has a little bit of a stand. It's up off the bottom. Now I just put a shelf onto the window seal screwed it and I put a brace underneath to really hold it because it's the battery that has the weight. The, the, this ain't too heavy, but with all of it, this works perfect. I cut a hole underneath for the exhaust to come out because you cannot put the exhaust straight down and bring it out here because it just won't bend enough. You have to have it, a lot of guys will put another two by four under here up on their edge to set it up higher to do that. Then the exhaust has to go outside. And when you do the exhaust, you want to have it, as soon as you can get it out that wall, get it out. You can't run it a long ways. You do not, do not put that into a fire uh, a chimney or any duct work or anything. You want to go straight out the building. The reason I know is because we have a corn burner and it's like a pellet burner, but a corn burner burns cleaner. Pellet burners in the house, we have one for a backup system. And it puts out a lot of fine ash. And I mean, when you clean that thing, I'll take it out like every other year, bring it out here and clean that thing. There is a lot of that creosote in there. With corn, you don't get as much. And uh, I was told by someone that really is knowledgeable about it that said, the highest BTUs you can get is out of corn, rather than anything else that you could burn. So we got the corn burner, and back then it was like, tw I think it was around $2,200. We had it three years, and I kept track of it, how much corn we were buying, because there's right out here across the roads, the farm, I get it from him, he'd bring it over on his truck. My son got one next door. So what a lot of times what I'd do is I'd get them to, him to bring like 30, 35 bags. He'd bring it over on a truck for me. And uh, that's what we would use all winter. And this here, that's why they say with that, do not put the exhaust into a chimney because one is positive and one is negative. And especially uh, the corn burner it pulls air through there, it's completely sealed. It pulls air through there and right back where it sets, I put a hole through the wall, clear outside, and uh, put extra metal in there and insulation on around that, you know, but you have to keep it where it ain't, it isn't gonna, uh, you know, catch something on fire and that, you have to be careful. And that's the way it is. This one, I put the wall, uh, right below, you can see the pipe down here. I put it out through the wall but I also got a big, bigger pipe that I had. I had this, and this is heavy walled. And I cut a piece of this and I put a, welded a plate on here with the hole cut the same size. I welded a plate on. Then I put it from the outside in and I put a couple screws in that plate through to hold this and this is inside the wall and that pipe fits right through it. So it's gonna protect it. And when you first start these up, they smell a little bit so you could, it didn't, it didn't stink too long because of all the newness. And uh, you could, you know, you could do it. I did it in here and left it burn in, you know, first time, but you could set it when you get it outside and let it run for a while. Then uh, it's been working great and everything. The intake, it has a canister here and I just brought it up through here and have it. I opened that and I looked inside like it's, you know, it's where your air intake is. 
there was nothing in there. Now one guy on YouTube opened his, he had like a paper filter. And I thought, well, they didn't give me one. And you know, the holes are kind of big air. It'd be better if it's something that breathes real good, but will filter. Well, I'm thinking, what do I have that's close to that? And I came across, I thought about it. One of these for a shop vac, it's called the wet filter. If you're gonna be sucking up water and that, perfect stuff for it because you can see, I'll put it up here, I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually see through this thing. You can see real good. It's it's bigger hole uh, filtration, but it gets a lot of air through it. And that's what I, I cut a disc to put in that cup when I took it off. Then I put a piece around inside like that. And then a piece on top, because there is holes on the top of that cap. I think that'll filter out dirt. And as cheap as, as these are, I can get a good many out of it to fix it. But that's what it is. It's one of them fo foam filters that go around your shop back. Works great. But one thing, I got the book on it, and I wanted to say is I studied the book. I looked on YouTube and I never heard anybody say this. But I looked and it says application fields for this heater. Various uh, automobiles and trailers, construction machinery, agriculture machinery, ships and boats, and then it tells the purpose of it is for uh, preheating and defrosting the glass, heating and uh, insulation of following areas, cab working air uh, cabins, ship cabins, cargo warehouse. Then, let's see, there's a part down here. Uh, the heater cannot be applied in the following occasions regarding the regulations for function. Now this is where you don't use it. And nobody, I don't think, just like me, I fired it up, I put it in, I didn't read the instructions. I went back and started reading. I should have did my study. They don't tell you this until you get it and you have the book. Okay, it's not supposed to be used for long-term and continuous heating. Now, I'm just using mine in the daytime when I'm out here. The rest of the time, it's shut off. My furnace is down to like 50 to 55. That's where I leave it. I wouldn't let it run, you know, 24-7. Okay, living rooms, here's the one. Living rooms, garages. <laughs> Gar that's where everybody's putting it in their garage and their workshop. Uh, heating or drying, using this to heat something or dry it. If it was outside, I don't see what it would hurt. And uh, stuff like that, but it's not, <laughs> you say right there, garages and that. But the thing of it is, is if you don't use this, uh, you shouldn't use a kerosene heater. A uh, kerosene heater puts out a lot of fumes. And that's the thing of it, is the fumes go out through there. In here, you don't smell anything. You don't smell anything at all. But I know I am saving money by helping this to heat this and not having a furnace so high. Because a lot of times with this new part, it's wider open and I have it back there so I can set up my bike in here if I wanna work in this. I just got the uh, exhaust here for the heat and that thing gets hot. It, it does good. And like today, it's I think 40. It might get like 42 today. That's uh, Fahrenheit. So it'll be good to put on. And I noticed my furnace when I first come out, it was running pretty steady. It's got that warm up back there, so it's cut down and it doesn't come on that much. Now that bumping you can hear, pulsating, that's the pump. And a lot of guys talk about the pump's so loud that they take it and they're gonna put rubber under it. And uh, it, I think it is kind of mounted. I don't think it's mounted steady, but this isn't that loud. And I always have music playing anyway. So I don't worry about that, it don't bother me. Uh, 
and if uh, you can buy the inner parts if you're going to put it in an RV or something they usually mount it underneath and they have the one burner up inside and sometimes they'll take that well you have to find a way to put the uh, pump now the pump they say should be on an angle up it shouldn't be straight across flat mounted the pump the exhaust thing I'll take it up the camera outside and show the exhaust thing there's a couple things you want to watch on it it has a little muffler that goes on there and I'll show it and talk about it but the foam I put in here in the intake use the bike battery which I already have and I can cycle it that way and for me this is the best thing and I only use it when I'm out here if we're gonna just stop and say she wants to go out and eat or we want to go get groceries or something someplace to go I shut it off and then when you shut it off you have to hit it off let it run down it cools itself off don't just unplug it off the battery and make it quit they definitely want you to have time to run it down and everything then let me get this there is a panel right there with the controls but they always also give you a little remote control that's nice so I just push when I come out I push on and hold it I'll see it come up I put it up to number six leave it go for half an hour turn it down to two or three or whatever I need let it go and it works great then to turn it off you'll hit off watch it hold it until it says off leave it go it'll shut down but you need to be around when you're using it because they I think too that is uh, to protect them from lawsuits because they're gonna say well you had it in the garage and it caused the fire they say in a book don't use it in the garage or your living room so that's what that liability that's why I tell guys I can't work on bikes I don't have liability insurance I could do something wrong mess the bike up then I'm responsible so liability you really have to watch but it's a great heater I want to show you outside the exhaust a couple points you have to think about so I'm outside and if we look in the window you can see the level for the oil if I can pick that up it has to be on the other side the way I put it so I have a little mirror one of them expendable or extendable mirrors I put in there and I can see the level when I fill it now for the exhaust you get that little muffler and what I did was I put a cage around it and I put that on there very hot that is for liability because if somebody comes up and happens to lean against that and it's hot they'll say oh you know I'm suing him because he didn't have to say it was hot or anything but you can see the pipe where it comes out of the house or the garage with the screws and the plate it comes down and bends and you want to put a piece of tubing back in there between this screw I have a deck screw and the wall to hold it there because it won't go back plus I don't want it flat against the wall and then you want to do that and have it laying on its side like this because up here right there in the bottom there is a hole it's just like a muffler on a car a little weep hole in case there's any moisture in there it'll come out now the openings over here and when you put it on you can put it this way or the other way now my weather the uh, way it comes in from the west it always goes this way so what I'm going to do is sometime take this push that over to this side so that this isn't getting air blown in you get a real high wind and it blows in there it could mess up your heater it should be the other way but that's that's the way I have it so that you know nobody will bump against it or anything but I tell you what it's been working great keeps my shop uh, at end of the shop warm and it's really been helping uh, I think it'll really help with the fuel oil because it's up like everything else it's going up 
So I hope it was easy, at least entertainment for you, but gives you some hints about them. And I would never burn used oil or anything like that in it. You want to keep it clean. And you can get a kit. Now, like, it's working great, this and that. But down the road, I might want to, they call it a rebuild kit. You get the glow plug in there. You get the gaskets where you take it apart to clean it out real good. You want to do that. And there's a little screen in there. Uh, you can see on other YouTubes, they show it. A little screen in there. We can buy that whole kit. I think it's 20 some dollars which isn't bad so i'm going to buy that and i'm going to have on hand in case you know it ever starts smoking like crazy or this and that but mine the one day it, it kind of smoked a little bit but then it quit right away you just let it run but any other time i start it it don't do it so it's wouldn't working great and uh it depends on what you want this for so all in all i would say consider your application for you. If you're going to heat a whole two-car garage, uh, it's kind of, you know, you're going to be burning it on high all the time unless you're working in one area where you can put the heat that way, turn this, you know, back here and just heat this area and, you know, it'd be good for you. But uh, for a whole two-car garage, it ain't going to get it like real comfortable. And I'm in here and I wear a shirt like this and a lot of times I have it warm enough that I take your shirt off just to have a t-shirt on. So you have to think of the square footage, I told you mine, and I couldn't heat the whole thing with this. It just wouldn't work. And then you can't run it 24-7. So, you know, you're gonna have freezing temperatures in your, if it's cold like around here, you're gonna have freezing temperatures at night. Your stuff freezes up. In fact, uh, with the furnace, we had wind so bad and bitter, bitter cold. Here we had a surge. Uh, the neighbors, their garage uh, water pipe broke, uh, cold water coming in. It broke, water everywhere. Mine had done the same thing. The furnace had kicked my furnace off. Here, uh, I come out, it was cold, way, you know, I keep it, like I said, 50, 52. I look, it's way down. It's clear down the bottom. And I hadn't been out here for three days. It was windy and just so bad. I said, I ain't even going out. I come out here, it's freezing in here. I mean, really bad. I knew right away. I went back, looked at the furnace, just pushed the button, kicked back on. It was that surge, the surge of power come in a little bit. And what happened was uh, I checked everything and the pipes go underground and come right up by my sink back there. And thank goodness they didn't break where I got to try to get under the shop to get it. Here it uh, ruined the faucet down at the base of it. It ruined it. So I got some new uh, seals put in, still leaks. It was leak like below it, messed it up. I took it off and I went and got a new one fine but now i'll know you know we have that wind to come out and check it before i go to bed at night you know make sure it's still on so if anything i hope you found this interesting if you're new at it really think about it and the great thing like i said that one of the best things is it's going to save money instead of buying oil and it exhausts outside I like that. It gets that fumes out of there because you don't want to use like a kerosene eater. Well, I'd, I'd kick my furnace up and just use oil if I had to. But with this, I think this is great for my application to help what heat I have in here. If you had a one-car garage, this would this would probably do it. You keep it closed up, you know, and you're going out there, or even like a shed, just one shed, uh, you could probably heat this. But you need whatever building you're putting it in insulated. This is all insulated. I have some more, a little bit more to do up here and back up on the top here. But from what I have insulated already, all the walls and that, and uh, drywall on, it's really holding the heat in good. So that's from Western Pennsylvania. Have a good day.